Okay guys, we did it. We have officially reached our journey's end. We have reached Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. And just full warning you, this is a spoiler video. If you would like to see my non-spoiler thoughts, go onto the channel and check out my journey to Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom video, which is also now in 4K, which is pretty awesome that we're starting to do that. But back to the actual film. We're gonna be talking about it. Plenty of things happen. Uh, it was actually fairly more simplistic of a plot I thought than Jurassic World but then it also had more plot than Jurassic Park which if you followed the series of reviews that's actually a pretty healthy blend for me I feel uh, and it was a lot of great moments um, I will say that I think this is the best CG the dinosaurs have ever looked like it was fantastic and they I noticed they blended it with practical effects which I very much appreciate so mainly they go to the island and they meet up with this business tycoon, uh, Claire does, and they're going to extract the dinosaurs and put, move them to a safer location so that they survive the eruption of the volcano on Isla Sorna, which every, I guess every time a Jurassic film opens, like they have to say what the name of the island is and that it's how many miles west off the coast of Costa Rica like I noticed that again I was like yeah we get it's the fifth film I know uh, it's just it's kind of funny but and that had a beautiful opening sequence with the extraction of the DNA of a bone from the Indominus Rex underwater and the Mosasaurus swimming around the T-Rex chasing them like it was shot amazingly well beautiful with the rain I love that scene so much but back to the main plot Claire uh, gets with Owen uh, to go with them and extract the dinosaurs but then one of the soldiers that's working with them ends up turning on them of course and tranquilizes Blue and they even shoot Blue which was disturbing to see because everybody loves Blue but luckily they did save her on later and it was just a beautiful sequence of the island destruction like it is an epic grand event that I loved seeing um well not like loves it I'm not like yeah there it goes uh, I was just like, it looked phenomenal, like the the lava, the destruction, it was beautiful seeing all the herds of dinosaurs running away from it toward the coast, and it was honestly really sad too, like some of the dinosaurs like barely able to swim, uh, it was just, it was really sad, uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful sequence of the escaping from the gyrosphere, um, trying to get out of the water because that was like one shot one take. I was very impressed by that I thought it was Very well done uh, and then they it was just like full of epic sequences like that like getting away from the lava again trying to drive onto the Boats that are sailing off driving the truck. That was really cool And then they left you with the scene that if you don't cry you do not have a soul uh, You see the Brachiosaurus uh, just a desperate attempt to walk away from the lava, but it's at the coast It can't go anywhere and it gets engulfed by the smoke and flames and it's it's so sad Especially for me because that's my favorite dinosaur actually So that was that was a heartbreaker And of course um the team that was hired uh, is actually taking the dinosaurs back to the guy's estate to sell them to different auctioners as well as the new dinosaur they've made the Indoraptor which um, they really need blue Henry Wu is back by the way and he's working on this project which what I find interesting is he's not like very villainous per se like he's kind of like morphing into the villainous role but he's really just kind of working on the science of things uh, and just you know getting the money because this is the this is what he knows this is what he does for a living but I thought it was interesting that they needed blues blood um, to infuse into the Indoraptor and there it's like a dinosaur that would take orders just like blue would which I thought was really interesting and it's funny slap at them that they uh transfused the t-rex blood into blue which I thought was also an amazing sequence of uh, just sneaking around the t-rex I thought it looked great um, again the visual effects were top-notch um, and then you know Chris Pratt jumping through the jaws of the t-rex was great uh, I'll be honest like the footage I'm showing you guys right now is very obviously they showed it too much of the film in the promotional material, which is why I stopped watching after the third trailer, which even just the trailers alone give away quite a bit, but we're hearing spoilers, so that's fine. Um, but I would have appreciated if they had laid back a bit on the trailers, maybe only two trailers instead of three, and yeah, I know they're going to do TV spots and then don't, just don't watch them. 
Um, but that's just where I'm standing on that. Uh, there's a lot of cool sequences. It's really, it really feels like a stuck in a haunted house type deal, but it's like, you know, there's like a killer in the house. You gotta sneak around. It's like that type of film that we get into, which I loved seeing. It was very well done. I love that. I love seeing the early stuff of Baby Blue being raised by Owen. I thought that was so cute, so beautiful to see. Like, seriously, this film had a lot of good stuff going for it. Um, they even introduced an interesting subplot with this little girl. Which I thought was interesting that, yeah, um, I don't know how you couldn't have tapped into this before. And, yeah, it does make sense that they could do this. Um, they, it's revealed that this girl, um, like, she, her mother died and, like, they haven't shown her mother. And I was wondering, like, why aren't they showing her mother? Is it gonna be somebody we know from the series? Is it gonna be Julianne Moore or something? I don't know. Um, just attempting to tie it in, in my mind, just trying to figure out who her mother is, and then it's revealed that it's just, like, it looks like her, like, exactly like her, which even, yeah, I'm probably stupid, but I, I still didn't understand, um, I was trying to figure out, uh, why, um, this is such a big reveal, because, like, very often, like, they'll use, um, kids, um, as younger versions of the parents, and they just look eerily similar, which, that's not really how it goes in the real world. Um, not overly, but... Then it's revealed that she is actually a clone of the original little girl, which I thought was really interesting. Like, that was a cool reveal. I honestly feel that was cool. I mean, they even, like... Because this whole thing is very much cloning the dinosaurs. Like, even, like, John Hammond brought up, like, like they could clone condors or any other extinct animal and yeah they wouldn't have any problems but because it's dinosaurs they're having problems um but yeah like you could in essence if you wanted to clone a person and they've done it which i thought was really interesting uh it's just there's a lot of cool things that they introduce in this film and i honestly feel like Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom was better than Jurassic World. That's honestly where I stand on it. I thought it was great. I thought the humor was great. I thought the characters were much better um, this time around. Now, like I said, I enjoy Jurassic World quite a bit, but Fallen Kingdom offered just like a more personal story and a more emotional one at that. And I thought it was very well done. I'm just like, I'm watching this footage that I'm showing you guys right now as I'm talking. I'm just like looking at all these visuals and it's so well done like I am blown away it it was a fantastic time it shot super well and I know the director was inspired by past Spielberg films and I definitely got that vibe while watching uh, he he did great and Michael Cicchino did amazing on the score for the film like he he's just really good at replacing John Williams um, for like when he did Rogue One I thought he did fantastic and here he is with Jurassic World and yeah the guy did a phenomenal job and, um, I don't know what more I can really say, except, uh, the dinosaurs are now loose in the world. Uh, that's where they leave you off, and I thought that was interesting. And I figured Blue maybe would go with Owen at the end of the film, but then she chooses to go on her own. Which, for animalistic nature, that definitely makes sense. But she does, like, give one final look back before running off. And I know she's off, uh, in in a canyon somewhere overlooking a neighborhood which uh i'm just being spielberg nerd i thought it was funny in my head because it looked like the same neighborhood from et it's like can you imagine if like a third jurassic world film blue is in this neighborhood and he meets up with an adult elliot uh <laughs> and they gotta take on this alien dinosaur hybrid and then <laughs> and then uh et comes in to save the day that would be an insane crossover that I would do. It's stupid, nobody would see it, it would bomb, but if I had the ability to make that movie, I would, just for fun. Even if it was just like, if I animated that, that would be hilarious. But overall, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom was great, and there was an end credit scene which was a surprise. Um, my, my friend asked me if there was an end credit scene, because often if there isn't one, they'll just get up and leave, and while I normally check online on a spoiler free website, to tell me whether there is or isn't an end credit scene, I just said, I don't know, because I wanted to just sit down and enjoy the music and respect the filmmakers, sit through the credits like I like to do. 
Um, and then I was surprised to see there is an end credit scene, and you see some pterodactyls, or are we calling them pteranodons now? I'm still unsure about that. <laughs> I grew up calling them pterodactyls, so I'm going to stick with that. Uh, pterodactyls are flying around uh, a building, and it looks interesting, and then it's revealed, boom, they're in Las Vegas, which can be really cool to see. I mean, dinosaurs running amok in Las Vegas could be fun. Heck, anywhere in the known world could be fun. Uh, I just, I'm intrigued to see that type of film, and I am definitely hooked to see a Jurassic World 3, and honestly, if you wanted to bring Jay Bayona, I think that's the director's name, if you want to bring him back for Jurassic World 3, uh, I'd be down for that. If you want to bring in a different director, um, somebody who hopefully we know that has done awesome previous work that we can uh, get a grasp on, uh, I would like that. Just, I would love to see Jurassic World 3. I don't know how people are going to take this film. I know the critics aren't really loving it at the moment. It's pretty divided. Um, I don't know the fan audience score. But on Twitter, most people have been pretty supportive of it. So I am hoping that it does the best that it can. I am very much looking forward to a future Jurassic World 3, which they have already set a release date of, I believe, June 11, 2021. So hopefully that sticks, and I am very much looking forward to more of that. So guys, what did you guys think of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom? What did you think of the whole Jurassic franchise? What's your favorite? Can you rank them for me in the comments below? I would love to read that. And yeah, we're going to be doing another series of reviews with Mission Impossible coming up in the next week. So if you like that, stick around for that. Uh, and if you enjoyed this review, hit the like button, subscribe if you're not already, check out the other reviews. And that being said, hope you have a great day. May the Force be with you, always.